like you came in Jesus name you won't leave here like you came oh in his name for the past of the Lord it's still the same and you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. You won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, afflicted, sick of lay. Oh, the power of the Lord it's still the same and you won't leave here like you can in Jesus name let us pray Father God in the name of Jesus Lord we come before your divine presence here on this morning First, God, we just want to take this time to give you thanks. Heavenly Father, we ask and pray now, God, that you would look down upon us. Heavenly Father, anything that is within this building or within our spirits that is not pleasing nor acceptable before your presence. Heavenly Father, we ask and pray this morning that you would uproot it in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, any sin any transgressions, any trespasses, Lord God, any iniquity, Lord, that you may find in the house this morning. We pray, God, that you would uproot it in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we pray, God, that you would forgive us now, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Precious Father, we pray, God, that you would touch us now. Speak a word in this house, God. Speak a word, God, that would build us up, God. Speak a word, God, that would give us new zeal and new revelations. Heavenly Father, I pray, God, that you would put running in our feet and a deeper desire in our hearts to serve you. Now, precious Father, we pray, God, that you would breathe on us once again. Yahweh, we pray, God, that you would send Rhema now in our very midst. And Heavenly Father, as you speak to us on today, we pray that you would also empower us, that God, when we leave this place, we would not only be hearers of your word, but God, we would leave with the mindset of being doers. We understand and we realize that it is the doers that will make a difference in this sin, sick world. It is in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, that we do pray. Come on and say amen. Come on and put your blessed hands together and give God some praise. In this house on today. I wonder if I got some people that are in love with Jesus. Oh my God, oh my God. Uh, let me ask that question again. I wonder if I got some people in the house that are in love with Jesus. Yeah. Oh my God. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. First, we give an honor to God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. We Thank God for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. As I tell you all each and every Sunday, that without the Holy Ghost, we wouldn't have a mind to be in the house of worship. Amen? Amen. We do give honor to the chairman of our deacon's ministry in his absence, Deacon David Mutry, and the deacon's ministry as a whole. We give honor to the beautiful mother of our church, Mother Hutchison. Amen. Hallelujah. 
along with the Deaconess Ministry, and we thank God for the ministers that have graced the pulpit with me, and those that may be in the audience, we give honor to you also. Amen. And for those of you that are watching us live via social media, we honor you all on this morning. Amen. But last but not least, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Hallelujah, somebody. The strawberries on my strawberry shortcake. And the glaze, hallelujah, somebody, on my Krispy Kreme donut. The cream, hallelujah, in my coffee. The cinnamon on my cinnamon roll, hallelujah, somebody. The jelly in my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Y'all ain't gonna help me here this morning. Uh, the stew in my chicken. My beautiful wife, Lady Miller. Come on, y'all, give her a hand. Hallelujah. 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 Grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles. There is a word from the Lord on today. There is a word from the Lord on today. We're going to come from two passages of scriptures on today. Two passages of scriptures on today. And the first is going to be Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 through 14. And the second is going to be 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, verse 19 through 20. And I'm going to be reading from... The new uh, translation Bible on today, uh, verbiage is a little different, but it means the same. Amen? Amen? The new living translation I will be reading from on this morning. Uh, the first passage of scripture is Matthew 21. Uh, verse 12 through 14. When you got it, receive it by saying, I got it, Pastor Miller. Amen. Amen. Matthew 21, verse 12 through 14. Listen what Matthew records in his gospel. Matthew says, Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out all the people buying and selling animals for sacrifice. He went on to say he knocked over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves. He said to them, the scripture declares my temple will be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. And verse number 14 says, the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Now turn with me to 1 Corinthians, uh, the 6th chapter, verse 19 through 20. And listen at the words of the Apostle Paul. Verse number 19, he says, Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? He went on to say, Who lives in you and was given to you by God? He says, you do not belong to yourself. In verse number 20, he says, for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. The word of God to the people of God. And I want to pull my subject this morning from verse number 12 and 13 from Matthew chapter 21. And I just want to read those two verses once again in your presence real brief. Listen with verse number 12 and 13 says. It says, Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out. Somebody say drive out. Drive out. All the people buying and selling animals for sacrifice. Listen what he also did. He knocked over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves. 
In verse number 13, he said to them, the scripture declares my temple will be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. And I want to talk to you this morning from the subject, it's time to take the trash out. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. If you would, can you just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. it's time to take the trash out. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I know that many of you now are saying, uh-oh. What kind of message is this that he's going to preach about today? Listen, my brothers and sisters, please. For some reason, I sometimes put off taking out the trash at my house. Even though it's really not hard uh, because our trash cans now, they have wheels and they also have a handle. And I only have to take the trash can to the front curb of my driveway. And once I put it there, the sanitation department comes and pick it up. And I want to say this, uh, Evangelist Nolan, uh, thank God for Goose Creek. <laughs> because Goose Creek really does a very good job. And I'm so glad because if they decided not to pick up the trash for about a month, we would have a serious situation. Am I right about it? Now, what I'm about to say might seem somewhat strange to some of you, but Jesus, in effect, wants to pick up your trash today. And no, uh, listen now, I'm not talking about the literal trash and garbage in your trash cans at your house, but the trash I'm talking about is the sin that you are occupying in your lives and also the strongholds that you are struggling with today. Now before I go any further, uh, I want to just ask you three questions. And I don't want you to really respond to it, but I want you to think about this in your minds. <clears throat> the first question I want to ask is, listen now, if Jesus was to walk into your house today, what would he find that is not pleasing before his sight? Don't oh, hold it. Don't, don't answer. Please, please, just think about this. Question number two I want to ask you, what would you try to hide or to throw away before he walked through your front door? Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Oh, I can smell a rubber burning. Some people are thinking right now. And question number three, what rooms would you try to clean up quickly before he came over for a visit? Oh, hallelujah. You thinking about these things now? Or you thinking about these things now? Well, listen, listen now. Sometimes we get so upset when anything is out of place or, or not in the right place in the church building or in our homes, just as Jesus did in today's text. But we never consider that we have been trashing up our lives with sin. And the Holy Spirit is trying, he, he, he is trying to tell us that he's tired of living in a trashy home. And in this season of divine expansion, Yahweh has promised us as a ministry that he is going to give us good success. But before some of us can experience these blessings, 
we must remove the sin that is still lingering in our lives. In other words, Yahweh sent me this morning to tell you that it's time to take the trash out. I wonder if I got a witness today. And I know that many of you will say, well, Pastor, you know, I, 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 I don't know if I got... Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. There are some things that you need to get straight in your life. There are some things that you've been trying to push to the side, and because they're not openly obvious to everyone, you felt to yourself that you could hold on to. But God says that the only way that you're going to be able to experience his overflow of blessings in this season of supernatural growth and increase and expansion is that you got to remove the trash. Hallelujah. Can I just visit the text just for a minute? Listen, in Matthew 21, uh, verses 12 through 14, after Jesus triumphantly entered into Jerusalem with shouts of Hosanna, Matthew, he wrote that he entered the temple and he drove out all of those that were buying and selling in the temple. And much of the buying and selling was likely related to the festival and the Passover sacrifices. And the temple had its own money required to be used. And buyers had to exchange the temple currency in order to purchase items to be used in worship. Now understand, the entire enterprise was corrupt and dishonest. The leaders were fleecing the people rather than serving them. And the entire process was a racket between the marked up doves being sold for sacrifice and the money changing. In those days, it was very expensive to worship. And the focus had shifted from worship and fellowship to commercial profits. And arguably, the worst part was that the priests, whose office was to mediate between God and his people, were using their positions to exploit those who wished to obey God. And see, God's house of prayer had been turned into a noisy, bustling, commercial market. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. And listen now, this temple that Jesus entered was the central place and most holy place of worship in Jewish faith. Within its inner sanctuary, there was a place called the Holies of Holies. And this place is where the Spirit of the Lord dwelt in earlier times, according to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 3. And the same place earlier was the place of where Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac. And this place was called Mount Moriah. And in the same area that the temple was built, this is where King David had actually given his son Solomon the instructions to build the first temple. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. In other words, when Solomon built this temple, this was supposed to be the place upon the earth where the tangible presence of God would dwell. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. <clears throat> so when Jesus entered into this temple and he saw how they had desecrated the temple, he became angry. And he threw them out. And as soon as he had cleansed the temple, the text said this, and God dropped such a revelation on me uh, because we have to understand that we can't operate fully in the spirit and in the move of God until we get rid of the sin. Oh, hallelujah. Now listen what the text says. The text says that as soon as he had cleansed the house, the Bible says that he went into the house, into the temple, and when he went into the temple and the temple was cleansed of the money changers, 
and those that had marked up the prices on the sacrifice, the scripture says that the blind and the lame were brought into the temple. And when they were brought into the temple, the scripture says that they were healed. So what are you saying by saying that, Pastor Miller? What I'm trying to tell you is that, listen, the house of God, whether it be a physical structure that we are worshiping in now, or whether it be us as an individual, the temple must be clean before a miracle can happen. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. I wonder if I got a witness in the house this morning. What are you saying, Pastor Miller? Well, I stopped by to tell you that God has sent me on an assignment this morning to tell you that it's time to take out the trash. Now, in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 30, listen, Paul gives us a spiritual revelation concerning our bodies. He says that we are not our own. He explains to us that our bodies is the temple of the Holy Ghost. He went on to tell the church at Corinth as well as us that we were bought with a price. And having been a purchase with a price and given our bodies as a gift from God, we ought to use our bodies to do what? To honor God. See, the Apostle Paul was explaining to us in the text that the Holy Spirit does not dwell anymore in material buildings or objects, but he dwells, oh, just touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, he dwells in you and I. Oh, hallelujah. And listen now, just as the priests and the spiritual leaders in Matthew 22, verses 14, verses 12 through 14, had desecrated the physical temple in Jerusalem with dishonest money changing and overpriced animal sacrifice sales. Some of us, understand what I'm saying now, some of us have made the decision to compromise with the sins of this world and therefore, we have desecrated the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is our bodies. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. I know it was going to get quiet. I know it was going to get quiet, and I know that's why the enemy is even trying to take my voice. But the devil is a liar. Because this word has to get across not only locally, but it has to get across university because we have brought so much baggage in the church and then we expect God to continue to bless us when we're acting like the world. Oh, y'all ain't gonna help me in this house. Y'all ain't gonna help me in this house. We got so much foolishness going around in the house of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we got, we got, we got uh, spiritual leaders hanging out with sinners and partying with the sinners. And then, you know, we try to use to say, well, okay, well, Jesus, he ate with the sinners. He entertained uh, in the presence of sinners. But I want you to understand that every party that Jesus went to in his day, when they left the party, they left saved, they left sanctified, and they left filled with the, with the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. In other words, their intentions might have been to go into the party and shaking it and breaking it down. But when Jesus got done, oh, hallelujah. Oh, look at somebody and say, that was a holy dance going on in the party. Why? Because Jesus took over. 
the party. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. And then we got so many different foolishness going on in the house of God to where we're walking it out. Taking secular music and bringing it into the house of God and trying to take secular music and to draw people to Christ. Oh, push your neighbor and say, Christ don't need no help. He don't need no help. <laughs> he don't need no help. No, 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 no. Because you know something? If you draw them with something that is evil, how are you going to keep them when you start preaching things that are holy? Oh, I wish I, had, wish I had some witnesses in the house. You can't keep them because you have drawn them out of false pretense. Oh, push your neighbor and say, it's time to take the trash out. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Push your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to take the trash out. Oh, tell somebody, say, it got to go, it got to go, it got to go. God is angry. Because we are desecrating his house with all of this foolishness. And then we're not only desecrating the structure itself as a place of worship, but we're desecrating the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is you and I. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house. I feel like I got to preach to myself this morning. What are you trying to say to us, Pastor Miller? Listen, see, see, sometimes we think some of the small decisions that we make does not affect our whole way of living. But I'm here to tell you that it does. See, listen, the problem arises when we see our decisions as separate from our bodies or too small to impact our life. If we want to honor God with our bodies, please listen to me, we must have first honor God with our decisions. What are you saying, Pastor Miller? Well, listen, the small decisions that we make here on the earth has much impact. And not only does it have impact in this time and day, but look at somebody say, eternally also. You might say, well, Pastor Miller, what are you talking about? Well, let me give you a, a small example of how a small decision can cost you a whole lot. According now to Numbers, the 20th chapter, verses 8 through 11, God gave Moses one simple command. He told Moses, he says, now, when you get to the rock, he said, the people are thirsty, and I know they are. The cattle are thirsty. He said, so when you get to the rock, he said, what I want you to do, Moses, he said, I want you to speak to the rock, and the rock will do what? Bring forth water. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. But Moses got caught up in his feelings. Because he was angry with the disobedience of the people. He made a decision. See, 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 it's all about decisions. He made a decision, and instead of him speaking to the rock, oh, I got some Bible scholars in here. What did he do? He struck the rock. He struck the rock, not one time, 
but two times. And the, and the Bible says now that the water came gushing out. So Moses, in his small little mind, thought that he was still okay. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. But look at somebody that says it's about the decision. It's about the decision. Moses made a decision to disobey God. Something just that simple. He disobeyed God. And now look at his penalty. God then told him, he said, because you disobeyed me and I told you to speak to the rock, but instead of you speaking to the rock, you hit the rock. God said, because of your disobedience, he said, I'm going to allow you to look at the promised land, but you will not enter. Oh, I wish I had somebody in the house. I wish I had somebody in the house. See, something just that simple, just that simple, Brother Pendarvis, just that simple, cost him not to be able to go into the promised land. Now understand, he had to deal with this consequence for almost 40 years. And God was not going to change his mind. So he walked around with the children of Israel for 40 years knowing that he will not enter into the promised land because he disobeyed God. Oh, look at somebody who says, it's about your decisions. It's about your decision. He made that decision not to be obedient, and he had to suffer the consequences. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. What are you saying, Pastor Miller? Well, listen now. See, just like the church in Corinth, we easily buy into the lie that grace means I have the right to do anything. As believers, our actions are covered by the cross and we have forgiveness for everything, past, present, and future. But can I bust your bubble just for a few minutes this morning? Listen, grace is not an excuse to do wrong, but it is a reason to do right. Oh, I think I need to say that again. I think I need to say that again. Because sometimes we act so crazy because we got grace. Well, God didn't give us grace to use it as an excuse to continue to do wrong. I believe the Apostle Paul says, shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound. He says, no. God forbid such a thing. In other words, he's given us grace simply because he wants us to understand that grace is actually a certification for us to do right. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. And listen now, listen. See, when we decide to house the, the trash of sin in our bodies, whether physically or mentally, we are dishonoring the temple of Yahweh here upon the earth. Oh, just look at somebody once again and say, neighbor, neighbor. It's, time it's time to take out the trash. As I conclude this message, listen, you might say, how can we take out the trash of sin from our lives, Pastor Miller? I'm glad you asked. The first thing we got to do is we got to throw it into the bag of repentance. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. In other words, you got to repent of your sin. <clears throat> you can't walk around and try to pretend that what you're doing is okay. I don't care if the world is okay with it. If God says it's a sin, 
then it's a sin. Am I right about it? And sometimes what we will do is we will say, well, pastor, it ain't in my house. But then we'll go around and we're still condoning what we know is a sin. Oh, hallelujah. And so the first thing you got to do is you got to throw it in the bag of repentance. In other words, you got to make a confession that, God, I have sinned. And I want you, God, to forgive me of my transgressions. And once you throw it into the bag of repentance, then you got to allow Jesus to dispose of it with his power of forgiveness. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. I wonder if I got somebody listening to me this morning. What are you saying, Pastor Miller? Well, listen, 1 John 1 and 9 says that if we confess our sins, it says that he is faithful and just that he would forgive us of our sins. And listen, not only forgive us, but he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Or push your neighbor again and say, neighbor, it's time to take out the trash. Also, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 22 and 24 says that we got to put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, somebody said new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Oh, tell your neighbor for, uh, uh, for the fourth time. Say, neighbor, neighbor. It's, time it's time to take out the trash. According to Hebrews 12 and 1, I believe the apostle Paul says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. He said, let us lay aside every weight and sin which do it so easily beset us. And we need to run this race with patience, oh hallelujah, that is set before us. Oh, tell your neighbor again, say neighbor. neighbor. It's time, time to take out the trash. According to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 25 through 32, Paul says, wherefore, putting away lying. The apostle Paul said that we must speak to every man truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. He said that we can be angry, but sin not. He said, let not the sun go down on our wrath, neither give place to the devil. He said, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands that things which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. And then Paul went on to say, let not corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good, oh hallelujah, to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And then he said that we should not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, wherein you were sealed on the day of redemption. He said, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sakes, has forgiven you. Oh, push your neighbor for the last time and say, neighbor, today is the day that we take out the trash. Come on and give the Lord a hand of praise. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us all stand. Hallelujah. I know that many of you this morning as you came in, you were given an index card. How many of you have your index card? How many of you have an ink pen? You don't have an ink pen, just ask your neighbor to share with you. I want you to write on that index card those sins that you're dealing with. 
Those strongholds. Those strongholds that you've been struggling with. I want you to write them down on the index card. Just tone down with this. Just with the symbol. Just tone down. I want you to write it on the index cards. Don't put your name on it. Don't put your name on it. And I want you to list those things that you have been dealing with. Those things that you have been struggling with. That it just seems like every time you look around and it seems like you've been out of it, but some kind of way you're being tempted to fall right back into it. And you need help with it. And this thing has been hindering you for years upon years. It might be a spirit of revenge because of something that was done to you when you were a child. It might be a spirit of revenge of something that a family member or a friend might have done to you. And you're walking around hoping and wishing something happened to that person. Look at your neighbor and say, that's sin, that's sin, that's sin. It might be that you have a problem sometime with telling the whole truth. You embellish a little bit. I don't want to just come out and say, well, you lie. <laughs> And, and, and you got a problem with lying. Well, write it down. Write it down. For some of you, and listen, it's in the Word, so we got to say it like it says in the Word. You might be dealing with fornication. You might be dealing with thoughts of fornication might be dealing with adultery and you want to be delivered today you want the Lord to remove this trash of sin from your life I want you to write it down and I'm gonna give you time some of you might even have to think about some of the things I hope that you don't have to use the back and the front. <laughs> I'm just joking. But if you have written down those things that you're struggling with, that you want to throw away today, and that you want God to bring deliverance to you today, I want you to walk up and I want you to throw it in the trash. Oh, hallelujah. Throw it away, throw it away, throw it away, throw it away. It's trash, it's trash. God said today he's going to take out the trash. He's going to remove the trash from your life. He, he's going to clean you up. Oh, Throw it away, throw it away, throw it away. Now, 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 now. Everybody, everybody, everybody that threw a sheet in the garbage, I want you to just come and form 
line around this altar. Here I'm going to shut up and I'm going to shake it. He comes and I'm God's going to clean it up today. He's going to clean it up today. I'll tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm throwing away the trash. I'm throwing away the trash. No longer, no longer will it have me bound. No longer will it have me held down. I'm throwing away today. And everything that you threw away, in this physical trash, it symbolizes that God is cleaning you up now, spiritually. You throw it away physically, but he's cleaning you up, spiritually. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Ministers, I want you to anoint everybody, everybody around this altar. Where's my ministers? Where are my ministers? We're praying a prayer of deliverance today. Come on, ministers. We're praying a prayer of deliverance today. God said today he's going to clean you up. He's got blessings upon blessings that he wants to pour upon you, but you are holding the oil up. He wants to pour more anointing on you, but you have been holding the oil up because of the trash of sin. You're throwing it away today. And God is cleaning you up right now. Throw your hands in the air and say, Lord, Lord I'm ready. My deliverance. Lord, forgive me for the sins that I've committed, for those things, God, that have held me captive. God, I pray today that you would give me a release in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, God, I throw away all of the sin that so easily beset me. And now, God, I am ready to run this race that you have set before me. For you are the author and the finisher of my faith. Deliver me today, God. Deliver me today, God. Deliver me today, God. Oh, let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, look on us now, God. Heavenly Father, you know what we've been going through, God. You know the struggles that we have faced, Lord. You know the strongholds that the enemy has tried to lock us in with. But God, I ask you today that as they have came around this altar, as they have physically thrown into this physical trash can, those sins, that had them bound. I pray God now that you would forgive them now. I pray God that you would cleanse them from all unrighteousness. I pray God for a full deliverance upon them right now. Heavenly Father, they might need a deliverance from a broken heart. Oh God, oh God, oh God, it might have been a loved one that broke their heart. It might have been a friend that broke their heart. It might have been a husband or a wife that broke their heart. But God, today, give them deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, it might be God that they've been holding on to some hidden jealousy. For whatever reason, God, they might have felt, Lord, that you have been blessing someone else more than them. And God, they've been feeling some kind of way, but they've tried to hide it from everyone that was around them. But God, they have taken now 
the authority to be free from this form of jealousy. And they have thrown it into this physical trash can. Now God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray God that you would uproot that jealousy spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, some might have been dealing with womanizing. Some been dealing with fornication, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, some been dealing with drugs. And some been dealing, God, with alcohol. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, I pray for full deliverance now. From the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. God, touch today, God. Don't allow anyone to leave this sanctuary today bound anymore. Freedom today, God. Freedom today, God. Freedom today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Heavenly Father, you know the hearts and you know the minds. Some are even dealing with sickness that was brought on because of sin. Heavenly Father, you said when we have such a situation that they would call for the elders of the church and the elders would anoint the one that is sick with oil. And you said, God, that in your word, Lord, that if sin caused the sickness, that the sin would be forgiven and the sick would be healed. You said that it is the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous that will avail much. I speak healing now in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak forgiveness of sin. And God, I speak now that you will bring healing in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord God, you know each and every one's situation. This very day, give us deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Now I want you to look to the heavens and say, thank you, God for my deliverance come on come on thank you God for my deliverance come on come on come on thank you God for my deliverance come on come on thank you God for my Praise him. Go ahead and praise him. Hallelujah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let me let me get two deacons. Let me get two deacons. Hallelujah. Now we're going to give you. <clears throat> Stand on that time. I'm going to show you what God has shown me in the spirit. Because you have laid it all before him. These two men, they represent the spiritual angels that have visited us on today. Oh my God. The physical angels that God have dispatched in this house.
He says he's taken up all the sin now. Lift the trash. Raise him up. He's taken up all the sin. And he's not only removing it from this physical building, but he's removing it from you and I. Take the trash out. 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 to name I've been cleansed today. Come on, come on, come on. Trash is gone now. I, I, I look at him one more time and say, I even smell better. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Ah, because he removed the trash. Oh, yay, my God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord! Thank you, Lord! Thank you, Lord! Thank you, God has taken your sins today. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. <clears throat> God has taken your sins today. And he has thrown it in the sea of unforgiveness. So in other words, God doesn't remember those sins anymore. So if God has erased it, I, 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 I want you to make sure that your neighbor understands what I'm saying. So I want you to please just go close to your neighbor and say, neighbor, if God has freed you from it and he has released you from it, don't go back and get it.
that we have and that we face in the church, Brother Pendarvis, is that we always going back and getting the things that God has thrown away. He threw it away. So stop digging in the trash can, trying to get it out of the trash can. It's thrown away. trash can now because that's gone that's gone the only people you see hanging around trash cans is homeless people and God's people are not homeless the Bible says that never have I seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread so we have no business for the last time tell your neighbor say you ain't got no business hanging around the trash can and then throw that thing away he doesn't throw it away the trash is gone I'm free. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God.